Deep Rock Galactic takes place on Hoxies, a formidable planet filled with ecosystems far beyond our comprehension. However, it houses minerals and wealth that far outweighs OSHA and workplace safety. It should be known, however, that the inhabitants and the invaders of the planet are not very happy with your, uh, a little bit of trolling and are willing to fight tooth and nail to reclaim their homeland. Welcome to Deep Rock Galactic, and in 20 something minutes, you will know everything about every enemy on this planet. First, we should get classifications. In my eyes, there are two types of enemies, bugs and machines, with bugs being generally split into three subsections. Those being the Gliffids, the Ground Boys, the Macteras, the Sky Boys, and the other ones. Then there are the machines, which there are less of, but still have quite a lot of depth. These are scattered everywhere around Hoxies and also come in many different variants. And by variants, I mean three, which are basically ice, radioactive, and infected. Tell me if I miss any enemies in the comments. Anyways, to start things off, we have the Glyphid Grunts. Now, these guys are the cuck of the bug world, the pawn, if you will. There's a lot of them, and don't get me wrong, they can hurt, but usually they're put down with one or two bullets. There's nothing outstanding about them, mostly bullet fodder to piss you off. There are three extra variants for this bug. The cold variant, which takes 25% less ice damage and takes more damage to fire. And the Valor player grunt which takes 50% less radioactive damage and then there's also the rock pox infected grunt which turns into something super annoying because they don't die when you shoot them and when you shoot them you have to shoot at small blisters across their bodies these guys have 90 health and no resistances or weaknesses the perfect blank canvas However, if the grunts are the pawns, the slashes and the guards are the knights. Slashes do more damage and are slightly faster and have an attack that stuns the player, which is very annoying on top of the fact that they do nearly 2.5 times more damage. I suggest taking these guys out quickly since they can down your shield in one hit. Next, the guard, which has nearly double the health and has this stupid blocking attack that blocks its weak spot, the mouth of the bug. It has a 30% resistance for almost everything, however, for it to attack, it must also drop its defenses, which is the time for you to strike. Both of these guys have ice and radioactive variants, which are the same as the Glyphid Grunts' stats. Just watch your health and focus on them. Well, that is, if you get the chance. The guard has 270 health and a 30% resistance to these, and 25% to these. And the slasher has 148 health and a 30% weakness to explosions. Praetorians are... <sighs> well, just look at them. Their very design is telling you to piss off, and this man will force you to piss off. See, unlike the prior bugs, which all had their critical areas where they take the most damage located at their mouths, these guys have it at their back, which means you'll have to ring around the Rosie the man, which is, I promise, harder than it looks. The most common way to deal with one is to wait for it to spit acid where it will stay still and you can beam it. Its two variants are the ice and radioactive variant, as well as the infected variant, which instead of acid releases a cloud of ice, radiation, or rock pox when it dies. Oh right, did I mention that when it dies, uh, it, it farts everywhere and you just can't go into that place without taking damage anymore? These guys have 750 health and a 30% resistance to pierce. Swarmers and spawns are just really annoying. If you have AoE like a driller, you'll be fine, but if you have a pickaxe and some spare ammo, you'll be fine as well. Just don't underestimate them, you can very easily die from them if you don't care. Exploders, as their name suggests, are bugs that explode, like creepers. When they get near you, they'll start a short countdown, and if you don't get out of there in time, you can kiss your life goodbye, especially on higher hazards. On higher hazards, these guys are an express ticket to hell, but on lower hazards, they'll just send you looking for red sugar. Also, in the radioactive map, when they explode, they create a cloud of radiation like the Praetorians, and on the frost map, they do the same but with ice. These guys also have an infected variant, which instead of ice or radiation, replaces the explosion with rock pox. These guys only have 20 health and no resistances, and a 25% melee weakness. I should also mention that if you shoot it in the mouth, it won't explode. The web spitter doesn't spawn in the glacial strata, but it's still annoying. 
It shoots, as its name suggests, webs and catches you, always in the middle of a battle where you sit there helpless to do anything. These guys have 39.9 health and no resistances or weaknesses. Then its deadlier counterpart, the Acid Spitter, throws glowing yellow balls of acid from the walls and from the ceiling. Now these might not look like much, but they have very little health and spawn sparsely. But oh my god, my shield is gone! The Acid Spitter has 120 health and no resistances with a 10% weakness to electricity. It also has an infected variant now, which, repeat with me, gives you rock pox. However, there's literally a direct upgrade to this mob, and that is the Glyphid Warden is like the idol in Ultra Kill because you have to kill it first. The big bulb at the top of the bug is a massive weak point. However, it has a lot of health, so be careful how quickly you rush in. This bug heals and provides extra defense to every single creature in the distance. Usually, it's just a slight inconvenience, because you'll never feel its effects. Because you always kill the warden first from afar. But if you forget or you get jumped by a warden, you'll quickly remember why it's such a threat because it will make you unable to kill a grunt. These guys have 800 health and no resistances or weaknesses. Now, for the big boy Glyphids. Firstly, the Oppressor. These guys, uh, well, <laughs> they're called an Oppressor. It has unbreakable armor with some super annoying weak spots like the Praetorian. Except it's also an anime villain. It slams and kicks, sending down rows of sharp rocks into your direction and knocking you away, which is good because it's a way for me to tell you to slam that subscribe button. All right, I'll keep this quick, but like you should comment, like sub. I kind of want some more subs. I'm gonna keep making videos better, keep finding better ideas. And if you can support me, right, you can get 100. I'll be eternally grateful. Also, you can call yourself an OG. Anyways, he's basically a mini boss, and to make it even better, probably the most common one. These guys can dig through the terrain like you can, and so a lot of the time they'll just arrive from nowhere. I suggest finding a way to get to its weak spot as quickly as possible, and then beaming it immediately. These guys have 900 health and a 66% fire. 50% frost, 66% explosive and corrosive, 25% electricity, and 50% PS resistance, but also a 50% melee weakness. Now, there are two new Glyphids that were added in Season 4, but don't worry, I'll expand on them soon, because I think they need context to be fully explained, because they are much more complex than the other Glyphids on the list. The second mini boss I'm gonna mention is the Bulk Denator. It's pretty rare, but also, like, uh, look at it. It is massive, and as its name suggests, it bulk detonates. It throws cluster bombs around, and when you see red orange particles floating around it, well, you better fuck off real quick because it's about to. It's very deadly, and honestly, a blast to fight against it. Your best call of action is to give it space and shoot the two glowing bulbs in its body. Also, don't lose your guard when you kill this thing. It has a final blow and most likely a final laugh. This guy has 4,000 health and a 50% resistance to explosives and no weaknesses. Also, this man also has a knack for uh, cosplaying as a ghost. Now imagine that same monster, and instead of making it uncommon, make it the rarest thing in the game, and let it explode into thousands and thousands of gold. This is the Crassus Detonator, named after the rich Roman Crassus. It has the same movement of a bulk detonator, except it also has a habit of coating everything it explodes around in gold. It has the highest health in the game as well, with 6,000 health and the same resistances and weaknesses. However, However, it is a hundred times more valuable, but for some reason slightly less intimidating than the bulk detonator. Now moving on to the Macterras, we're gonna save the bosses for last. The Macterra spawn is the grunt of the family. They are super common, but their projectiles, like the acid spitters, packs a punch. However, because they have generally low health pools, they're not too much of a struggle. Really, they're only a taster for the hellfire to come. These guys have 223 health and no resistances, with a 100% weakness to fire, explosives, and melee damage, as well as a 50% weakness to electricity. The Trijaw is like the primal Aspid in Hollow Knight. In fact, it's just the Mac Terrors, but about three times worse because they fire three little acid balls instead of one. Now, usually these guys are no problem, but the moment you turn on Hazard 5, you'll die. You can genuinely only take one or two hits from them, and it's like a multi-shot crossbow. You just don't miss with them. If you're not playing a scout or something that can handle them, just 
pray your life. I mean, look, man, I hate these motherfuckers. These guys have the same health and defenses as the spawn. The brutal is much like the spawn, just with more armor. These guys have nearly tripled the amount of health, having about 600 health each. They're also more aggressive, flying forward and taking all the hits, being the tank of the group. However, these guys also have the same stats for defense and resistances as the spawns. Finally, we're coming to some of the most annoying enemies on Earth. First is the Grabber. I have nine health. Grabber. Grabber, Grabber, Grabber! Look at it. It is super fast and has a super small hitbox, but it doesn't attack? Well, what it does do, however, is grab. It can pick you up and just drop you off somewhere random. And it'll always do one of two things. It'll throw you into a hungry crowd of bugs or off a cliff. These guys rival the- uh, uh. Yuck. In terms of how scary it is, these guys have 500 health and no resistances or weaknesses, but are always sure to scare the crew. This is the Goo Bomber. It has way too much health, fires way too much, and is such a pain in the ass in general. Like, goddamn, these guys are annoying. They're not damaging, but they slow you down to a snail's pace. Like, I hate fungus as much as the next guy. Why, why, why do they make it come in every map? These guys have 800 health, no resistances, and a solid 20% fire, 30% melee, and 50% corrosive weakness, as well as a 20% pierce weakness. These guys have also recently gotten an infected variant, which, say, say it with, say it with me, replaced their effect with rock pa now moving on to a speedy round nader sites at first i didn't even know they were a separate species i i always thought they were just mac carers but i can tell you that they are dangerous see the main threats are the shockers they always die in one hit from everything but their strength is in numbers not in individuality. Their pure quantity is enough to drown the best of dwarves. Seriously, they will swarm you, and unlike swarmers, you can't aimlessly shoot at the ground. You have to actually aim and flick in the sky. These guys are genuinely deadly and so goddamn annoying. My advice is to get good at flicking and take each one out with a single well placed shot from your secondary, or a sentry turret or shredder bomb would do. The Rove and the Breeder just spawn nader sites. Know that you should really focus on them because if you don't handle a breeder, it will swarm everything and make them round unplayable. The breeder has 1,500 health, no resistances, and a 20% fire, 50% melee, 50% corrosive, and 20% pierce weakness. Also, it has an infected variant, which it- Oh. Oh, it just- it just poops out parasites. Oh, sweet. Now for the other speed round, the rival tech. The robots. The shredders are the most common of the rival techs, and like the shockers or the swarmers, they have their strength in numbers. These guys have an 100% resistance to poison damage, and everything else will one shot it. The robots can shoot lasers, shoot people, and fire missiles, and are also super annoying. However, there's a chance that when you kill it, instead of exploding, it will actually stay alive, just grey and glowing green. From then on, you can hack it and have your own little patrol bot of your own. These guys have 900 health and a resistance to poison, and a 100% frost, 100% explosive, and 30% electrocution damage bonus, as well as a 200% melee and 100% corrosive weakness. Then, the three turrets. The first turret is the burst turret, which shoots three tiny orbs that do a solid amount of damage. These guys have the most health out of all turrets with 750 health and a 100% resistance to poison. But it also has a severe weakness to frost, 100%, explosives, 100%, melee, 200%, and corrosive damage at 100%, as well as a 30% weakness to electrocution. The sniper turrets are super annoying, just like every other game that there is, and you basically need a scout to get rid of them. These guys are at the top of the rooms and you'll know you're being targeted by one when a red laser is pointed at your skull. It's deeply ironic to me that the two pick classes are the- <laughs> Alright, get a clip of Nathan saying, get down Mr. President. These guys only have 300 health and a 500% weakness to melee damage? and a 100% resistance to poison damage, of course. The Repulsion Turret is probably the most annoying, since they can control areas super well and can damage you without you even noticing. They shoot out four alternating barriers that shoot out in a square and diamond formation. 
What makes these even more annoying is that their barriers are always hidden under the shields that they're shooting out and because they interchange, it makes it super hard to get critical hits on it, unless you're good. These guys have 600 health and a weakness to all of this and a 100% resistance to poison as well. Now, the two mini bosses that spawn, the Prospector bot and the Nemesis. The Prospector drone cannot do any damage, it is merely just a target for you to bully. However, it is not completely hopeless because it can attack you with minions. It can spawn patrol bots and shredders and will try to escape from you. However, if you're good at the game, this will hardly stop you from wailing on the poor boss. It has 3000 health, a 100% resistance to poison, and a 100% ice, 100% explosive, 100% corrosive, 200% melee, and 30% electrocution weakness. The Nemesis is a bot that, unlike the Prospector drone, is actually super good and super fun to fight against. See, this bot is a predator, hunting for you. You'll know when he's here because it will start to mimic the voices of your teammates, including It said it to me! It, said it. Said it, to it can do the same as the barrier bots and can grab you like Dr. Octopus, as it fires lasers and forces you to fight its shredders and blah blah blah. It also explodes when it dies, so I mean that's pretty cool. Finally, the caretaker, which is the boss that you will be fighting after the industrial sabotage. However, it was already talked about in this amazing video called Every Mission in Deep Rock Galactic in six Wow, it, I mean, it's really good. I mean, you should watch it. However, just for a quick rewind, whatever, it's basically like you combine every single robot into one. And as a result, it's a combination of the shield barriers, the arms of the nemesis and spawning. Now for the miscellaneous, which I couldn't really put into a box. And also the two Gliffords. First up is the most annoying and dangerous creature in the entire game. The cave witch. I'm not scared of many things. Anything can be sold with enough goo and gunk, but but this creature, it lurks. It stalks its prey, and then when it finds you, well, let me give you a quick rundown. There's two things that can happen here. No, oh, no, that's a lie. If you're in this situation, you're dead. At this point, you can only do one thing, and that's pray. Pray that it gets killed before you do. When it attaches to you, it will slowly drag you up and try to kill you. If your teammates are good, or if you got a lucky Bosco call, and end up not being immediately brutally murdered, you'll be slowly politely dropped down only to realize that you have zero health and there are 50 bugs around you. And if you don't have that luxury, then you're dead. However, these little guys only have 100 health and no weaknesses or resistances. Really, just keep vigilant, look at the top of caves, and respond to your teammates. Then there's the Deep Tora Honeycomb and Wasp Nest, which are both the same. They spawn a particle of little bugs, bees and wasps, made to piss you off. Uh, they're never a big problem. I, I didn't even know they were actually enemies. Just like, shoot them, deal with them, whatever the hell. There are also Charge Suckers, which change the behavior of a Betsy bot. They're actually quite deadly, don't underestimate them. The bombs pack a punch. I suggest staying far away. Oh, okay, no, it's somebody. Oh, it's some. Oh, okay, it's somebody shield around itself. Oh my. Oh my fucking god. Now there's the Stabifying, the most terrifying creature you're ever gonna fight. This is a praying mantis of the trees, a predator through and through. Once it has gained sight on you, you're a dead man. It'll reel back and then shoot you like a gun. Uh, just a quick tip from me: don't actually shoot. The, the vines shoot the balls that connects the needle to the vine. These guys have 300 health and no weaknesses or resistances. The speedball infector is more a plant than a bug, but a pain in the ass nonetheless. You'll never expect it, but when you walk into the room and find one curled, you'll be filled with annoyance. Shoot the little thing in the middle and don't get hit yourself. It does a bunch of damage like the acid spitter, but on steroids. It's also spit, so it's kind of gross. It has 800 health and a 100% weakness to fire. No resistances, luckily. Then there are the the Curonas. These guys include the younglings and the shellbacks. The younglings exclusively spawn in the salt pits biome, and it's just a small version of the shellbacks with less everything. The shellbacks, which is just a term for the younglings with more health, by the way, spawns everywhere, unlike the youngling, which only spawns in salt pits. They're super annoying and can easily stop you from reviving a teammate or getting a resupply as they roll around, and you can only hit crits on them when they're either standing up or if you hit this tiny little bit of its armor that isn't filled in properly. Also, they, they don't freeze when you cryo cannon them, so that's kind of annoying. Both of them have a weakness to corrosion and poison when rolling, but when it stands up, it loses much of these, and instead, the resistances become weaknesses. These guys have 100 health and 450 health for the youngling and shellback, respectively. There's also carnivorous larvae, which infect bugs before popping out of their victims and damage you, so eh, it is what it is. Finally, the Sand Shark, or the Nayaka Trawler, I think. 
This uh, bug resembles a shark and only inhabits the sandblasted corridors, hiding within the sands, diving in and out, grabbing a dwarf and dragging them across everything. It's very fast and even worse, its weak spot is on its stomach, which means to hit it, you have to venture beneath it, which is rare. A common strat, however, is to find it and then ping it so you can track it through the sand for at least a little while and get ready to barrage it with damage as it leaves the sand. One of my favorite little uh, bugs? Uh, shark. Except no, that would be the end of this bit if there weren't for two new guys, which have been recently added both under the Glyphid variant. The first one is the distant, distant cousin of the acid spitter who, instead of spitting acid, decided to take the approach of a monkey and sling shit, much like the driller's sludge pump. This guy is just a driller's sludge pump on legs. No exaggeration, the first time I saw the red septic, I genuinely thought it was a new upgrade or overclock for the sludge bar. Hey, we traded. Oh. Wait, what was that? You haven't seen the new wizards, have you? Oh, yeah. Oh my god, I thought- It's yes. the flying habanero pepper again. Holy shit! See, unlike the acid spitter, these balls actually stick to the ground and the walls, so they can pack a punch and you can walk into them. Focus on these guys as you would a goo bomber lest you want a battlefield to be another beast of its own. It has 270 health, and with no info on its weaknesses or resistances, I suggest you'd look at the wiki. The Stingtail is a completely different beast. Imagine a tanky Glyphid Grump and give it a grappling hook that drags you in like a cave leech. It sounds annoying? Well, it is. Say you're in the middle of a fight or trying to revive your teammate. Well, <laughs> no longer. Or even worse, it drags you off a cliff. It has these killer looking tusks as well, which can slam you and use to kill you. It has 600 health. Now, this video is already ending way too long, and if you watched to here, I'm so thankful. Uh, like and subscribe. But, to save time, I'm not actually going to explain the three Dreadnought bosses because I've already gone in depth with them in my last video on DRG. However, the three Dreadnoughts in short is the vanilla one, the Hive Guard, and the Twins. Burst Damage Machine, Shield Focused Minion Slinger, and some healthy healing bastards that also escape by digging into the fucking ground. The Tyrant Weed has three parts to the fight. The core, the health bar of the enemy, the sprouts, the damage dealers, and the shield of the enemy, and the health part, which will heal the enemy occasionally. Every couple sprouts you kill, the core will open, and so you don't lose your process, I also suggest killing the healing parts first. Then you can steal its organs. It has 3000 health with a 50% electricity and 30% explosive resistance and a 20% weakness to melee damage. The Omen Tower is another boss that's actually a machine event, a totem pole if you will. There are three segments randomly selected from a pool of five. Drone replication, which spawns a drone that blows you the hell up, super annoying and deadly. Heavy bursters, a laser that if you cross, you die. Twin lasers, a laser that if you touch, you die. And finally, the pulse gun, which is the hardest one. You have to go onto this platform and hack it to open up its weak points. This is the hardest machine event, and if you're a driller, you should just give up. This thing has only 1,800 health, but also has a 70% resistance to fire, frost, and explosions. So have fun, driller mains. Finally, there's the Rockbox Corruptor. Harold. This man is passive until you start shooting foam at him. There are two shield layers that protect the three parts of the body that needs to be damaged. You see these little tumors, foam them up, and then when you have everything coped, suck it all up. The creature's design is incredible and very intimidating, Lovecraftian almost. After you break his shield, shoot his core, and he'll soon die. I honestly don't know how much health this guy has, its resistances or weaknesses because it's really, really rare. But in truth, he's not too hard. Just remember to soak and suck before getting ready to fuck. So that's concluded. Every single enemy in Deep Rock Galactic. This has been a long, long ride, and honestly, pretty fun to make! In the works now is a Minecraft video which has a script I've been working on for weeks, which will come out a week after the next upload, so uh, in two weeks. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, I wish you all the best, uh, have a good rest of your day, uh, bye bye!